Welcome to Marty's Garden, a micro farm on the mid north coast of Australia and New South Wales. This garden consists and grows under permaculture and agricultural sustainable principles. Lifestyle, sustainability, and self sufficiency is what it's all about. G'day, my friends, and welcome to another Marty's Garden vlog. I tell you what, mate, it's a little bit chilly here today and but i'm enjoying life i'm getting ready to do some work outside chickens and girls are ready to come out i gave them some feed uh, already so we'll just let them out and then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about mushroom compost come on girls come on you gonna go out and do some work out there come on there we go good girls yeah, I love my little gals. As you know, you've been watching the videos and seeing their great little composters and little magpie warriors. Now, the silver fox, loaded full of mushroom compost. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about the why, how I use it, when I use it, and why I use it. That's probably the best way to put it in a format and then you can make your decisions whether it's good for you or how you would like to use it now these chickens are really stupid they love foam boxes get out of it why are you eating the foam box silly dingers there sure is something satisfying about a big truck Loading up a heap of compost that's coming to your house because you can see the future vision of what it's going to do. I'm a big fan of compost and feeding the soil and getting the soil nice and deep, deep soil profile. So when it rains and when you water, it stores that water there and doesn't run off, become hydrophobic. Compost is absolutely awesome for that. And mushroom compost, it have to be one of the best ones out there for storing water. And it can be the base for many different projects of compost for that fact. And if you live on sandy soil, just like I do, it is absolutely brilliant for holding that water because sand, as you know, it just drains away and it's gone. And it just eats up your compost for some reason and it's gone. So mushroom compost is absolutely awesome for that. So there's one of the house. Now also for clay it's really great when you put it on top or you mix it through because what it does is then it breaks up and it permeates that clay that's sticking all together and stops the water from growing in because clay is full of minerals it's just it's really really good stuff but it's too dense so it needs to be broken up with some compost so it is one that's really good for digging through and also another how is putting it on top like levels. A lot of people, they teach about this lasagna gardening, right? Lasagna raised beds. And it's all about the no dig garden, which I am all for. I haven't dug any gardens in my yard. It's all been above ground with straw bales and feeding the top of the soil with compost. And mushroom has been one of my major ingredients. So it's also a really good way to get those gardens going at the beginning if you just want to plant straight into them and get those lasagna beds going awesome stuff for that so that's how now the when i would say the when is you know depending on the season i would throw out mushroom compost at any time you need to start a garden really like unless it's snowing where you live and you just want to wait for things to sort of warm up you know <laughs> then you've got to wait but here on the mid north coast where i live yeah, it's pretty warm most of the year round, so we can garden most of the year round. So I'm, I must admit, I am blessed in that way. I'm not in the tropics. I'm actually borderline subtropics temperate, where we can just push the edges and the envelopes. And mushroom compost plays a big role in that for sure. Now, so we covered the how, um, the when, the where, as I said, like in lasagna beds. Now, also the where is when you are building these, like these big above ground raised beds, right? People, what they do is usually when they're starting out, is they build these above ground beds. They go, awesome, 
And they go, oh no, I've got to fill it with all this stuff and I don't have enough material to fill it with. So they just start throwing in old dirt and sticks and twigs and logs and all that type of stuff, which is okay. But remember, that stuff down the bottom, as it's breaking down, it needs nitrogen. So the older the material that goes in, the much better because it's going to steal away less nitrogen from your garden beds. And deep-rooted plants are going to go down to there and where that nitrogen is going to fight for that for the plant. So if your plants start going yellow, that's possibly what's happened. But in the future, in the long term, once it's all broken down, you've got all these beautiful wet material down below that stores a lot of water. So you give and take a bit. One way to get around that is to just use mushroom compost. Put those bottom layers down, fill it up about one third of the way through, and then start filling it full of good quality potting soil and compost and different beautiful blends to get it going. It's absolutely the bomb when you do it that way because that bottom layer of mushroom compost stores a lot of moisture. I reckon around about 80%, no problem. So when those roots get down there, man, they're just going sucking all that moisture out that it's trapped down below, which I like to call the soil bank, because you've got these, you're banking the water as it's going down and storing down deep. So really, really great for that. It's also good for like scattering around the garden and things. And it's also not too bad to put in the worm farms to make worm bedding, because the worms absolutely love it. It's sort of like usually generally alkaline or around pH neutral, more than likely alkaline. So it makes it a pretty good base for worms. Now, worms don't mind if it's a little bit acidic, but the biology in the mushroom compost is really good because it's all this like funky gray stuff moving through it and you see it when it's breaking down and you're like, ooh, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Well, the compost worms are gonna feed on that and that's setting up your soil web. So what you're gonna do is you can feed it with nitrogen so you can use blood and bone you can use coffee grounds, things like that, to sort of get the system rolling, and that will heat it up. Now, you've got to be a little bit careful with mushroom compost, and I'm going to mention this further on down the line about what to look for in the video. Now, some mixtures that you can use in it. Um, you can put blood and bone in it, and then you can mix potash into it as well, and that will help So with your nitrogen and all your NPK to help your flower set and all your growth. And you need to let it sit for a while because what happens is, and this is what I said I'm gonna tell you about further on in the video, where we have to be a bit careful. Sometimes when you buy mushroom compost, it isn't fully broken down yet. And they will sell it to you through that process to move it on quicker. It depends on where you're getting it from, what landscape supply you're getting it from. Maybe you're getting it from a mushroom farmer straight off the rack. Now, if it hasn't gone through the heating process when you put it into your system, it's going to start heating up, especially if you create more than, say, a metre square or three feet square cube, then it starts getting really warm. And what happens is all that biology in there starts working and breaking down. It's all vibrating and it heats up. And so you've got to watch that. So in big worm farms, you've got to be careful with that. And also, if you're adding it to gardens, big garden beds, you might need to let it sit for a little bit. But in the winter time when it's cooler, you can use it for your advantage to warm things up. So think about that, just be a little bit careful. Mushroom compost isn't always broken down. You may need to compost it on even further. Now, what I'd like to hear from you guys is, have you ever used mushroom compost? What's your favorite compost? Please let us all know down below what your thoughts are on this type of compost and any questions that you may have that I mentioned in the video because compost is all about creating a living soil it's about feeding the soil not the plants so if you get that into your into your, your psyche and you really you know start thinking about that and don't think about throwing chemicals and fertilizers and all this stuff going like feed 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 the plants think about feeding the soil because the soil that feeds the plants and that way when the insects come the bad insects come they'll stay away from healthy plants insects will attack sick plants that's what they do and if you can feed the soil just like giving yourself good quality food share the love with your plants by creating great soils and compost is one of them then you're on your way to work and wonders in the garden my friends adding compost worms is just a future proofing it of yeah, future proofing it to make it even better and there's lots of videos 
on this channel about that. So do your research in the channel and learn about worm farming in a small space. It's absolutely, absolutely awesome. And now we need the big thumbs up. I need some like thumbs up guns going on. Waiting for the music. They're always late with the music here, aren't they? I think we're going to ask for some music before we go because we've got the questions down below. We've got the thumbs up. I'm ready, please, Mr. Music. Don't leave because we've got some good tunes coming. Yeah, dig the tunes. Have a great day. Happy gardening. We'll see you in the next video real soon. You are Double hand flex again. Just one. You are the tide. <laughs> Bye for now. Clear is the leisure, bright as your eyes. Golden skin sundress. You were the skies. And I see the color I've known all my life. We are timeless We are timeless